Hello, Hello welcome to Poultry Festival. Uh, you're now at a podcast. It's called Good One. Um, Bo Burnham is here, if you're wondering. He appreciates that. Thank you. So, uh, what's about to happen is we're going to play first the trailer for Bo's upcoming movie, Eighth Grade, um, followed by, um, have you guys seen his last special, Make Happy? Yes! Great. Uh, so I don't have to provide that much context, but Bo asked me to provide a little bit. Um, so we're going to play the uh, sort of finale, uh, the Kanye rant. Um, so for some context, uh, he just sort of, right before this moment, he gives a sort of a jokeless speech uh, about uh, performance and how in the modern day with social media, we're all performing. And uh, as you'll see, this song is about the nature of being a performer in this context. Um, and the rest he'll explain during it. So what will happen is we'll play the trailer, then the clip, then I will come back, then I'll be like, Bo, and then he'll come back, and then we're gonna talk about uh, the things you just saw. And that will be it. And thank you guys all for being here. Enjoy. <laughs> Bo Berno. I'm sweating from, from just hearing that. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bo. Um, I think a, a good place to start with this joke is uh, three years before, at the end of the What Tour. Mm. Um, how were you feeling about stand-up? What were you thinking in terms of a new show? Yeah. Um, I just want to quickly say sure. the elephant in the room being there has been some recent <laughs> Kanye news that this is <laughs> like... This was, this was written about 2015's Kanye, and I don't think two white guys should be riffing about what just happened. Uh, so, like, let's avoid that. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I was doing stand-up for a while and liked it. Um, and had always been a nervous sort of person um, and had the first panic attack of my life doing my last show on stage in front of 800 people in Edinburgh. Um, you know, just tunnel vision. I didn't know what was happening. Um, and that started to sort of happen more incrementally and felt like it was gonna, I felt like I couldn't do stand-up anymore. Um, and the, the finale to my last show, What, was sort of like this, but it was pretending like the problem I had was other people's perception of me. Sure. When the problem really was more personal than that. Um, so this was a way of vaguely doing that, of saying like, I, I, I felt like I wasn't, the one thing I wasn't being honest about on stage is that I was absolutely terrified of it. Yeah. Um, and that's what this is uh, vaguely attempting to do, is just to articulate that. Yeah. Did you start, was, was there a time between the panic attacks and then start working <laughs> on this show? I mean, like, how did you then be like, I gotta, like, did you have a light bulb of like, I'm having these panic attacks, maybe I should write a show about this? Maybe I should go to therapy, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, that's like truly what I should have done. I don't know, I mean, you know, I started writing it, I went on the road. I mean, I've had, you know, 12 panic attacks my entire life, 11 of which have happened on stage, and one of which, has hap one of which happened um, on the Amtrak to DC between shows that I was having panic attacks at. And, you know, panic attacks are not chill at yeah. all. Like, truly, no, really unchill. And um, <laughs> panic attacks in front of 3,000 people yeah. are terrifying. Yeah. Um, so it, it was the thing, you know, I, I, it, was, it was my enemy up there, what was the fear of my own anxiety and my own panic. And I could pretend like, oh, the thing I hate, the, the, yeah. the, the thing I hate about comedy is that culture's so bullshit. That's fair? <laughs> yeah. That's fair? Yeah. Um, they don't you know, care everybody the else. culture's so bullshit and everything's crap and comedy sucks yeah. and I'm the cool kid, you know what I mean? And it wasn't, the truth was I was terrifying. Um, so in a way, it, you know, I, and it's a lesson I've learned, which is that the only way to um, fight or, or solve these things is to express them. So could I express my own panic in it? And I look at, what's weird is I, 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 I haven't seen that in two years. You know? yeah. 
and I was watching it, and I can't see the panic. It's yeah. so weird. I watch, and I don't believe that that person is nervous. And <laughs> I was shitting my pants that day, truly. There were two shows, you know, like, the really terrible thing about recording, especially, yeah. you know, it's three years of work, and then it is one night, yeah. one night to record three years. Of, it's not like an album or, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, the entire work that you've been working on for three years, you better nail it on Friday, November 13th, or it's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I did two shows that night, and I never did two shows in the night because my voice couldn't take it. Um, and, you know, was up the night before, sick to my stomach, um, got, got through that first show and went backstage and completely broke down. And then, the, then could attack the second show with a little bit of calmness, and, yeah. and, and most of what that is, 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 most of the entire show is actually from the second taping. Did you, um, when you started working on the show, do you, did you have the whole concept and then you start writing songs, or does it sort of develop as you write song? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it, it, yeah, it comes together bit by bit, I think. Separate bits come together, and then, um, and, and, and the whole thing with this show, which my other shows had tried to do, you know, I did theater my whole life, and that's what I was interested in. I wasn't interested in stand-up. I, I, I don't find, I, I don't feel at home in the world of stand-up. I like the people in it, but like when I would go to a comedy club, I'd be like, what is, like this place is not for me. Like, yeah. like brick walls and two drink minimums and like, I, like, but truly like this is not what I feel yeah. at home. So it was always sort of trying to wrestle the things I loved about theater into stand-up, which was, you know, staging and lighting and things like that. And with my previous shows, it was sort of, I would just, I didn't have enough money or whatever to, I, I would, just go to a venue and, okay, I have an idea that I want to black out in a spotlight here, yeah. so I'd have to sort of um, wrestle, wrestle the show technically mm. every night, given what was in yeah. the space we were. But um, my, my shows had picked up enough speed where with this last hour, I was able to play in theaters, play in you know, 1,500, 2,000 seat theaters. Um, so the idea was I want to write a show that is meant to be in a theater, because you see stand-up in 3,000 seat theaters, you see them in arenas, and it's the exact same thing that would yeah. be done in a uh, comedy club, except yeah. it just blown up, and you know, it's like you go to arena shows, and you're like just watching a guy talk, and you're just watching the television. It just feels, <laughs> and it's cool, because that's what they do, or, or watching the girl talk, whatever, but it, it's... I wanted to build a show and write a show for the space of a theater, a show that couldn't be done in a smaller space. So that. That was part of it, is like the writing the bits with the lighting in mind. That this this bit will not make sense unless yeah. The, the Which is probably why there's no album. Is there's no album? I think of this. Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, that, that it did. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense without the visuals. So it, so it, at what point are you seeing Kanye? As you can tell, I don't do comedy anymore. As, yeah. as how deadly serious and boring all of this is. <laughs> it's only going to get more serious. Yeah, so yeah. buckle in, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so at what point are you are you seeing Kanye? And you know what is the when you're seeing him do that the rant that's a, this yeah. is based on? Are you like? I'm, I gotta leave now and like start. Yeah, again, so like, you know, like Kanye's doing his stuff right now and it's wild and you know, whatever's <laughs> happening. Um, but I have always been a fan of him deeply conceptually. I think he, he has an incredible approach to the theatricality of live performance and arena performance. He tackles arena performance in a way no one else does. Um, he has a really, really economic use of lighting, monochromatic lighting, just Precise. The, it's, it's all just really, really incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, Saint Pablo toured this last one. I, ri I, I directed uh, Chris Rock's last special. Ripped off that look for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is. It's just ripping off the Saint Pablo monochromatic sort of incandescent <laughs> light for that. Um, but yeah. So I saw, I saw the the Yeezus tour, which is an incredible, incredible live show where he comes out in a jeweled mask and performs the entire first hour and a yeah. half of the concert without you letting him see his face, which is just so smart and incredible and, yeah. and, and brave um, and bold. But he, d he would do this thing every night where he would stop for 15 minutes and auto-tune rant about like Adidas and geopolitics. It was like very, you know. And there was one, and you can see them all online. There was an amazing one at the, at the uh, United Center in Chicago where he was talking about the fact that they didn't let Michael Jordan buy the Bulls. <laughs> and the, the, the chorus that he kept doing was, um, we should have never, ever let MJ play for the Wizards. <laughs> it, was like, it was just like over and over again talking about Michael Jordan should have played for the Wizards. Um, <laughs> 
But I watched that thinking like, you know, what even even if the, the sort of scope and, and paradigm of the value system he's talking in doesn't match up to yeah. me, he's speaking his truth, you know? So I thought, well, what if I spoke my truth? And, and the initial instinct is, okay, well, my truth is burritos and Pringles and something, you know, the, the, yeah. the, but then it, it's, it's sort of a, it was a thing in, in sort of the idea of a lot of my stuff, which is, can you satirize the thing and give you the true heart of the thing as yeah. well? You know what I mean? Like, I'm making fun of what he's doing by going, oh, yeah, it's burritos, and what, what if this big thing was expressed with these banal, pedantic sort of grievances? Yeah. But then the second half turns into, but actually, what am I worried yeah. about? And what am I scared of? Um, and that's in a lot of the things. You know what I mean? It's like, I make a country song, it's making fun of country songs, but it also hopefully gives you like, the, the amazing yeah. feeling that those transcendent country songs are you give like you. you're using the vocabulary of it to also then do the thing that you it can do exactly and, and it just even the whole form of the show is like this show is going to make fun of what a, what a spectacle is and also give you all of the ooh ah moments that a spectacle gives you that make spectacles so fun um do you for something like this are you writing the lyrics first or are you doing the music first um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it, it's basically a rip off on the runaway chords. I yeah, think. yeah it, it's totally rip off. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it's like me in my like garage, like with a stupid auto tune thing, like being annoying. I mean, I don't know, and just uh, yeah, I don't remember. That's why <laughs> it's two years ago. I don't remember. So specifically, the the Pringles and the Chipotle part. You mentioned that like the the. the it establishes like what is the comedy of it, like oh we're doing the ops, like my problems are less. Is that why specifically were those the two things? That it's just a joke. I mean, I read people who are like, oh man, the burrito yeah, is like yeah. all of his feelings. He can't keep his. And it's like no, <laughs> like <laughs> it's like it's like sure, yeah. Um, I read those before. I was like, oh, I gotta ask him about these metaphors. Yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> maybe I mean maybe it's subconscious or something. I don't. I can't give myself that much credit. I mean, it was like. It's, uh, it's just, you know, I wish I had picked something I don't actually do, because sometimes I'll go to like Chipotle and the guy will be like, eh, uh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> and I actually get bowls, I usually don't get the burritos. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I got big hands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't know why it's Pringles and burritos. I mean, there's a sort of cylindric uh, consistency. When, when you were writing it, we were like, oh, this will be at the end. Like, are you, Yes. Like, was there was like, oh, there's a hole in this show and this song will fill it? I called my stage manager like halfway through filling with, uh, and said like, I, or my, my tour manager and said like, I, this is, I think I have the finale. I think I'm writing something that there's no way I can do something after it. Um, oh. Um, I tap my mic comedically for those listening. Uh, yeah, I, yes. I felt like this is the old, this is the, this is how to end it. And I look back and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty chill with that. You know what I mean? I you look, look back at my old stuff, I don't like it. But that, I'm like, that was it. I did what I was trying to do in a lot of other yeah. bits. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. It's like a way, way, way better version of the finale to my previous show, I think. Yeah. Um, because you are doing everything a full show at a time, do things... <laughs> Do things change? Like yeah, yeah. Like at, at minimum, I know that at least live, you had you said before you started the breakdown, uh, you said put the lotion in the basket. That's what it said online. That li in the uh, live version. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, things changed. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, the whole thing was. I gotta kind of back up a little bit, like to go like the whole point was most people by the time they get to theaters they're not working it out anymore. Yeah. And or they kind of are, but they're working it out in clubs. They present it in theaters. The whole point was like we're going to work on this show. We're gonna work on the technical aspects of the show and the jokes all at the same time. We're gonna test this show on the road mm -hmm. as a technical thing in 1500 seat theaters. So by the time, because a lot of times like you get to a taping of a special and it's all this production put onto a hour of comedy that's never Had been anything. like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's purple lights and all this stupid shit. And it's like, it makes no sense. Um, you know, like our show, like that is exactly how the show looked on the road. Exactly. There was no extra lights on. The, we, 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 did, we brought in those, uh, Joe Werner, my, my sound guy, Chris Galante, um, who did the lighting design. We spent two weeks in a little, like, uh, garage with the full lighting setup stage all, you know, taped out. Um, you know, in that, that was late 2014. 
thought of the lighting fixtures, okay, we're gonna have three pairs of those yeah. two tiered trusts, because that can give us a, it, just a very um, uh, versatile sort of lighting setup. And, um, but every night, before the show, after the show, we would sit down and go, okay, that, li that didn't totally work, and that, that and we would change lighting cues. The lighting cue would get a lap. We would, we would you know, test the lighting cue like a joke. Um, so that by the end, it really was the four of us who knew the show back and forth, and were performing it every. And you're thinking even when you're like, you're also thinking for how it would look filmed, even when you're yes. starting out. Y yeah, bless you. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The the other thing was to try to make a stand-up special that was that we, you kind of introduce some. I'm all over the place with this. Sorry. Okay. You introduce some film language, and you actually do it like a, a movie and not just like a taped performance. There is a minute and a half in, uh, of that um, last bit that's filmed without an audience there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Like the big zoom in on, the big sort of push, crane push when all the lights come down and I go down, there's no, you know, th there's no audience there. Wait, so then how are you, what does that mean? I mean, so the, you just The did audio it. is flown in live because I'm like this, you can't really tell the audio. Um, some of the extreme close-ups when I'm, when I'm uh, in the sort of serious part crouched down, that's filmed without an audience. We did, there, there are pickups all over the show. Um, that's it, right, so I was gonna ask this later, but it was the thing that I think I noticed, I also heard about Gerard's special, where Gerard's special was not filmed in concern of what the audience at that time yeah. th thought about it? Yeah, definitely. Well, <laughs> particularly with him, for sure. Um, I just remember hearing bad things about, no offense, but like that, that though they're, they're awkward tapings, and then I saw the special, it's like, it's incredible. It's like, yeah. oh, he didn't care. But yeah, yeah, we don't, yeah. It, it, I mean, you are playing for the viewers at home. I mean, you tell that, like, same with, you know, we did, we, I just did Chris Rock's special, and a big part of that special is basically getting here yeah. on him, you know, and just telling him, like, just so you know, this is who you're performing for. Yeah. Like, I, it, your, your instinct in a large theater is to perform for the back row, you know, um, but, but the, the, the scale of performance for film and, and live is, is totally, totally different. So did you, was that part, the only part you did? Like, did you just sort of redo the entire act after? No, no, there's uh, the country song, there's a dolly thing that goes on the front of the stage. Um, y if you pay attention, you'll realize, well, the, a camera can't be there. Yeah. Um, so that was picked up. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember. <laughs> so um, I was telling you before, I've talked to comedians about this joke even before I knew I was interviewing you, it just sort of has come up. Because um, it, and I was talking to one community who sort of like it changed its complete relationship to comedy. So specifically the part, <laughs> I know. Um, and the part where you, so the, specifically the line where you say to give you what I, he cannot give himself. Um, <laughs> he said it helped him realize that like, especially with Honest, the, like the confessional comedy, you're essentially like giving the audience your life so you don't actually have to live it. You don't have to sort of grow. It's sort of, it's for their disposal. You don't have to do it. Did you f feel that? Did you sort of like, what was the feeling when you wrote specifically that part? Dude's a dork. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, the, 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 the part of it is like, yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm nervous. But like, I, I approached the emotionality of the special in the same way I approached the comedy. Theatrical, big, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was doing like stupid little pretentious Greek plays in high school where I was like, oh, mother, you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's, um, it's a weird thing. You know I mean like I, I would throw myself into the comedy and people are like, ha, ha, ha. And then for 58 minutes I'm being funny and then for two minutes I throw myself into my sadness. Everyone's like, he's going to kill himself. Like, legitimately, <laughs> no, but legitimately. And I would have to explain to people like, yeah, it's part of me. It's part of everything. Yeah. Um, what was the question again? Well, did you f <laughs> that line? The the idea of I mean, I, I'll, I'll ask this. Oh, second give part. you, but I can't yeah. give myself. It's kind of just well phrased. I'm saying it's got a little do 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 do. A lot of it has to do with just like does That's it the fit worst in the word, pocket yeah. of the lyrics? Um, and it's also like I like kind of like to lean into the emo thing. You know what I mean? I'm just saying I like to. Uh, uh, Comedy is very aggro and masculine, so yeah. I like to get up there and like cry. Uh, <laughs> but the, the second uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's weird to be having a panic attack on stage, and they don't, they don't know it's. No one ever knew I was having a panic attack. Yeah, I, and it would last thirty minutes. Providence. So you're Island. just doing the show, but in your head, you're like, what? Well, more than that, it's like I'm not catching my breath for twenty minutes. Every line is barely coming out of my breath. My vision is tunneled, and I'm killing. 
yeah. a killing in a 2,500 seat theater. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're laughing, and that's a weird fucking feeling. Yeah. It really is. Um, that you don't even have to be there, and they are, like, you don't have to be present, and they're still responding to it that way. Yeah, or just like, wow, these are too, it's so, you know what I mean? It's like a chef that's starving as he's like, oh, you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's like too, it's like too ironic, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the whole thing was like, you know what I mean? Just, it was more like, can I express this thing and do the thing that is the answer to this thing yeah. and also the thing that caused the thing, yeah. which is like, you know what I mean? I, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna strip it all away at the same time that I'm yeah. making it well, you, so much bigger. Um, you were saying that Penn and Teller was like a big influence and that they... Yeah. Like, yeah. they, 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 you'll say, this is the trick we're gonna do, and then they still... Well, do. Penn and Teller's great, yeah, exactly. Penn and what Penn and Teller does is they go, magic's bullshit, right? It's so fucking stupid, you do this, and then, whoa! <laughs> and then at the end, you can't believe the trick they did. Yeah. And that's sort of the point. Isn't performance and comedy so fucking stupid while you laugh and yeah. hopefully hold your heart or whatever? Um, so the second thing that comedians are really taken by is uh, to tell an audience that they are the audience. Um, and that they are a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! And then especially how you shoot that moment where you go, that problem is yeah, you, and then you yeah, like shoot him at this like yeah. black mass. Yeah, it looks great, yeah. Can you tell me about conceiving all of that part? <laughs> I love that part. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I think it looks really nice. And that's like, you know, Andrew Wade, our, our, our cinematographer, and, and Chris, is, and, 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 and um, oh my God, what's, what's his name? Mark, I'm so sorry, cut this part. Um, uh, <laughs> Why do I not? Anyway, um, I hate the way audiences are lit in Santa specials. I mean, it looks like it looks like Conan live from the yeah. Chicago theater, which is totally fine. I'm saying Conan, no, 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 but that's not an insult to Conan. Like Conan's live shows are not meant to look like gritty live shows. Yeah. You know, it looks like the Oscars or, or the Golden Globes, where it's all lit and interesting. You know. Um, and comedy specials are often, you know, the audience is totally lit and we're showing people laughing and clapping as if we need to signal to people at home that yeah. that's why they like it. It's absolutely stupid. Um, but also, like, my whole thing was, and it, it has to do with the theme of the show, is that, like, a beautiful thing that I felt I stumbled into was I'm going to talk about myself as a performer and feeling lonely and isolated as a performer. Um, and I felt people, the audience understood it because they related to me, me, the performer. Yeah. So when I'm presenting the audience to the home viewer, I'm not presenting the audience to the home viewer as this is you. Yeah. No, no, this is your audience. This yeah. is, I want you to feel like me and what, and what, what they look like to me. You guys look nice and chill. Right? <laughs> but truly, like in a 3,000 seat theater, they are a shapeless, like dark mass of people. It's really abstract and strange and weird. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to present the audience to the viewer at home um, like, like it was me. And I knew that the special, that, that, that's the really weird thing about a Santa special is that, a taped Santa special, is that it's you performing to 10,000, or whatever, you performing to 2,000 people being taped and then viewed by one person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that, that was the thing, is that you're watching a show that was built to be viewed live by 1,500 people and taped to be viewed by one person. person yeah. um, so... Again, like this is the bit at the end that, that has resonated for people, I think, in a certain way, but really didn't resonate that much for people in the live show. Oh, really? Well, it, re it resonated comedically and, and, and uh, uh, pyrotechnically or whatever, but the end never really made sense because I think it was always meant to be viewed here. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> Got too passionate there. Uh, <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask you specifically about the I can't handle this part. Uh, sort of two questions. One is, what is this? It's, um, yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> it's like being all cool. Uh, what is the this, and I can handle this, but also, you know, when you're performing it every night and you're screaming, yes. what are you, in, are you honest in that moment? Do you feel like, or do you feel like this is a performance? Like, is that, like, truly, like, you're in that? Uh, a little bit. I mean, by that point in the show, I'm usually cruising and I'm not yeah. so nervous. But what's cool about it, when I was watching it, is, you know, I think. <laughs> Man, all these compliments, I really am being kind of um, well, It just looks amazing. Um, no, but what's cool is that the this really is this. Yeah. And the now really, really is now. Really, yeah. really, you know? Um, like it actually is literally this, the exact thing I'm doing at that moment. 
and the now is, and I really can't, yeah. you know, it's, it, there's, it's very literal. I cannot handle performing in front of you people. It this, gives yeah. me panic attacks. <laughs> I want to stop. And I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so. <laughs> I might not. I'm saying, I'm happy to go back, and I might go back. And like, I'm better with it than I was oh, yeah. then. But, you know, I think there's added meaning in it, the fact that I haven't performed in yeah. the two years since then. You know, like, I wasn't kidding. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't kidding. That, that, that was, it was rough. The way, I mean, the, I mean, the way even you're talking about, it's like, oh, I'll go back. I mean, it's like just, I feel like how Steve Martin said, like, he quit and then realized he just, he didn't, like, know he quit. He just sort of was, like, not doing it ever again. I mean, um, but yes, the yeah, joke. Steve Martin said he looked in the back of theaters, though, and saw empty seats and quit. You know, that wasn't you didn't, my, yeah. that was not my reason. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, like. The show. Um, the show ends with you saying, I hope you're happy. How did that line reading change each night? Great question. I, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing. I don't think people really, I, you know, I don't know if a lot of people have gotten that, but like, I hope you're happy. It's supposed to be like, I hope you're fucking yeah, yeah. happy. You know I mean? <laughs> um, and I hope you're happy. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. some nights you're like mad at them, and some nights you're like, no. It's all, the truth is also, I'm a, ve like, the performance is very, very, very technical, and I, and I wish I was a little more free up there. It's very, very similar yeah. night to night. Um, but I think I, we ended up taking a take that it skews more to the genuine. Yeah. Like, I hope you're happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, it's much, it's, the meaning to me is much more, I, I hope you're fucking happy. Like, here it is. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, like, I'm going to, you know, or whatever. But again, that's like, I, I'm being dramatic. I'm being over dramatic. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm connecting with, young people that are overdramatic people, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, I'm saying, yeah, exactly. I'm saying, like, you know, I'd have, like, you know, a 15-year-old girl come to me after a show and be like, it meant so much to me. And it's like, yeah, cool. Uh, you know, for a long time I was told, like, you know, um, you just seem like a comedian for 13-year-old girls. And after a while I was like, fuck yeah, I am. And I made that movie, you know? So, like... <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I think I am. I probably am. Uh, speaking of... I'm the, I'm the all-time low of comedians. <laughs> How much of it do you think it is that it's music? Musical com music comedy? Because I, I feel like... Music comedy? Music comedy. Yeah. Musical comedy? Musical comedy. Yeah. How much do you think it, all that connection and sort of your ability to do this is completely tied to the fact that you started as... Or you were brought to the fore as a musical comedian? Um, which is what? Which, which is the one, the connection you do, and the sort of line that you walk. In the act, yeah. you're saying. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, a musical comedy, what's nice, or for me, what, what the strength for me is that, like, there is no illusion that this is r being yeah. riffed. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, when it's music, like, it's not like, oh, let me just, uh, you know, like, you can't casually perform a yeah. song. When you see guys do it at parties with acoustic guitars, it's anything but casual. It's like, <laughs> Truly high stakes and very awkward. Um, but like, so yeah, like the musicality was able to buttress, that's probably not correct, the theatricality in yeah. terms of just like, don't worry, like this is really planned and fake. And yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? And you were aware, and there's no way that no one could not be aware of it because you, you're not be like, hey, so I was doing this the other day. And you're like, you'd be lying to be like, it's the other day. Right, exactly. Because it's exactly. a song. Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah way. totally. <laughs> but even in this, it's like, I'm going like, when I'm going like, all these problems I have and I'm feeling, you know, like, and I just want to, I'm actually going in my head like one, two, like I'm, you know, I'm keeping the <laughs> yeah. tempo in my head to make sure I hit the whatever. So it's like, <laughs> it's all very, uh, very unnatural. <laughs> So I was listening to an interview from around the time when this special was coming out, and it felt like this was directly leading to talking about like, oh, I'm going to continue this sort of conversation by filming this movie about an eighth grade girl. Like it was like part of one mm. breath. Can you talk about how this joke in particular transitioned into eighth grade? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so I had felt like I had really exhausted myself as a subject, like truly. I mean, I was like so tired of my head like just you know what I mean and truly like I didn't like 
expressing myself through myself anymore. I just, mm -hmm. I had done, I knew like, oh, if I do another stand-up show, I'm just gonna try to do this again. Yeah. I'm just gonna, like, I, I have nothing more to say right now than what that show did. Um, and just because of my job, you know, the only way that I, I was exploring this, you know, whatever, trying to explore the current cultural moment or whatever from within as a performer and like a D-list celebrity, which is like, that's not, it, it just, so it becomes really satirical and ironic and, yeah. you know, and I wanted to drop all of that and go like, if I'm, like the people I'm really interested about, the, the, the real story of the internet, if, if, if that's what my show is about a little bit, if my show is about, or my stand-up was trying to describe the sort of meta anxiety you feel by being on the internet um, in a place where your sort of self is atomized into a, you know, a thousand different mm -hmm. versions of you that are watching each other and taking inventory of each other. Um, what was much more interesting was to watch someone that was not being paid attention to, that, that, that doesn't go viral. You know, I wanted to hear, a, I wanted to make a movie about someone that doesn't go viral, someone that's living with the internet as a texture, someone that's living with their anxiety untethered by, you know, they, you know, she is in the movie, it's like she has a panic attack in a bathroom before going out to a pool party. And so it's not backstage at, you know, the yeah. Beacon Theater before, yeah. but it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was the point, to go like, if I'm being really, really honest about my feelings and, and, and my thoughts, they're a little more vulnerable than I'm giving. I just, want, I just wanted to drop the irony, drop the, yeah, and drop the satire, drop the cynicism, drop the, oh man, this is, ain't this, isn't this moment so bullshit? Isn't it so fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? And go like, no, like, really, like, I'm scared, I'm sad. I have, like, my tummy hurts because of what, what's yeah. going on. Really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because to satirize the internet is, at the end of the day, toothless. You know who satirizes the internet? Geico, Old Spice, <laughs> yeah. truly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, wh what's, the, what's the game in town? Like, there's, a, there's like a Donald Trump cartoon right now on Showtime. It's like, what? Like, <laughs> no, but really, like you're making a cartoon of him? Like, good luck. Like, but, but like you know what I mean? Yeah. What, what kind of angle is that, you know? So I wanted to do something um, smaller, more granular, more emotional. What is it about a sort of less a, written? Yeah. What is it about a, a sort of a thirteen-year-old girl is the best way to tell a story that to tell your story? I mean, like your entire career was even you, you're doing stand-up. It's you when Zach Stone is a thing for you. What is it about a sort of thirteen-year-old girl is the best way to tell? Well, it felt like eighth grade. It had to be the, a thirteen-year-old, you know, because it was like um, the internet kind of makes thirteen-year-olds of us all. You know, we all act like. I think 13 year olds think. and kids in, really feel the internet in their bones. You know what I mean? It, it, it's they don't even see it as this other thing that you know people on CNN will talk about when they talk about like our hashtags are ruining our youth. It's like you don't even have the, you know you like your turn. You don't even understand what this thing <laughs> yeah. is, and uh, in any sense. Um, so I watched hundreds of videos of kids talking about themselves online. The boys talked about Minecraft, the girls talked about their souls. So it was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, it like kind of just gonna be a girl. Um, <laughs> like the, uh, the movie about a boy would just be like 90 minutes of Fortnite references. <laughs> so it's like, um, but also to try to tell a story about, there's two answers. Yeah. To try to tell a story about being young now that was not nostalgic, was not a projection of my own experience, so it being a girl forced me to not project my own experience onto her. And two, the real truth is, you know, I would perform my show and I would meet kids after, and you know, young girls would come up to me and they understood what I was expressing in that bit and on stage way more than guys my own mm -hmm. age, way more. Yeah. So if there was a bridge between us that I had to Cross to write the movie. It was built to me by them, truly. Yeah. Um, I felt understood by them before I presumed to understand them. And I think it has something to do with a certain flavor of anxiety that's maybe more particular culturally to young girls than it is young boys or women in general. I know the anxiety that I have is shared by my uh, m my mother and my sister, yeah. um, and not really the men in my family. Uh, so yeah. um, one of the most sort of arresting thing. The movie's like funny too. I mean, yeah. it's not like <laughs> I'm saying, it sounds like so stressful. But. <laughs> uh, one of the most stressful parts of the movie, uh, one of the most is how you hold the camera on Kayla, even when in moments where she doesn't want anyone to be looking at her. Can you talk about that decision? Because it is, to see a person when they don't want to be seen is a powerful thing to do on camera. Right, yeah, totally. And that's a great, um, yeah, it's a great point. It's sort of similar to the show in a way where it's like, 
the medium itself is almost the enemy of the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the medium of performance was my enemy. The medium of her is cameras and the captured medium and movies. You know, this girl so wants to, almost like the anxiety of the movie, you guys haven't seen it so it might not make sense, but like the anxiety of the movie is almost, I wish the movie of my life sucks. If anyone were to be watching me right now, they would mm -hmm. think I was really lame. Yeah. She wants to sound like all the kids, yeah. the, the young girls in movies that are perfectly articulate about their experience. She wants to be able to, um, she, she wants to, she would love to edit her way through her life. You know what I mean? She would love the tools of, of movie making to get away from herself, but she can't. So that was part of the challenge of, of, of the, the, the movie. How do you make a movie about a generation that self-documents, that has such an intimate relationship with the viewed image, and that, I don't know, there's the old thing that like when photos first showed up, um, people thought it took a bit of your soul, you know, yeah, and yeah. they wouldn't, and I think it's true. You know, yeah. I think that's true. Um, you guys probably feel that, I'm saying a lot of you guys are probably young people that are being creative and, and things, and, and like, I'm very curious to see what people young people do and make, because I think we have to wrestle with portraying this very meta, strange, layered thing that even knowing it, the internet, almost robs us of our ability to articulate it. Yeah. Um, so I'm very curious to see what, what people do. And you see older people thinking the internet's so uncinematic and it's so unportrayable, but it means something to us, I think, like neurochemically. So. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm. I feel like the old, old guy of the internet. Truly, yeah. I'm like the like the elder of the generation of people that grew up with the internet. No, really though. Like everyone a little older than me didn't really grow up with the internet. Really, yeah. and I mean the internet is in social media because yeah. the internet's just like a big library. Social media is like it's got into mm -hmm. your heart. Um, and so everyone, I'm, I'm very yeah. curious to see what kids do. The sort of the most in that way meta of is you have the vlogging scenes where you have a teenager who's the actress, yeah. performing as a teenager who's not comfortable performing, but performing like she is. Yeah, yeah, right. How do you, how do you, how, how, what's the nature of both writing those and sort of directing her, you know, what were the conversations like to sort of get what the tone was supposed to be? Yeah, well, it's really interesting, yeah. And it's funny when, like, actual eighth grade, you know, when actual, actual young people see the movie, they just, you know, it's like, they're like, oh, cringe. And it's like, yeah. Like, you're all, it's like, yeah, you're really embarrassing. You are cringe. Like, um, um, but yeah, it was just letting her be herself and, and, and letting all the kids, giving them permission to be inarticulate because that is the experience of being young. I didn't say a complete sentence until I was 20. You know what I mean? Truly. <laughs> truly. You know what I mean? The experience of being a kid is like you just drank a glass of milk and now you're like, oh, double, double, double. You know what I mean? So, like, that was. That was a huge part of the movie, is that for the movie to be articulate at the level of a 13-year-old, which everything as a 13-year-old is performance. Yeah. And that, I mean, if you have a cat, like, just have any low-level casual conversation with a 13-year-old, it is immediately <laughs> high stakes. You know what I mean? It's just like every moment they're trying to navigate and they're doing an impression of some moment they've seen someone yeah, else yeah. do, you know? Um, and they, they, they act like their favorite celebrities or people or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's, um, and I think we all still do, in a way. We just get a little better at smoothing the edges out or yeah. something. What did you learn about performance from working with Elsie, the actress who played the lead role? Um, I mean, everything. I mean, she, there's parts of the movie where she, you know, does in 20 seconds what I spent an hour trying to do, you know, better than, than I did it. Um, just like a fearlessness and an openness and, um, I, in my stand-up, you know, it was like all, I always had to present things I had control over and things I had thought through. And what she's able to do really well is present you with the real horizon of her thoughts. You know, this is, this is the exact edge of what I'm thinking and mm -hmm. to let people in on that. I think that's much, much more beautiful than to be instructive and to go like, all right, sit down, I'm gonna tell you a little bit something, rather than to go like, ah, uh, you know, like she yeah. said so much in her, ability not to articulate um, and to be open, to be able to do that reliably and technically, which she was able to do. Yeah, over and over again. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, so you, you came up doing theater, you did stand up, you made a TV show. You know, what is it about film and how audiences consume it uh, as a sort of a good medium for you to explore the theme that you want to do? Like, what is about film, which until this, you know, I 
and not heard you necessarily talk about like, oh, I want to be a filmmaker yeah. necessarily. What is it that you found doing it that you're like, there's something really comfortable with it? Um, well, just logistically, it was like, the thing I like to do is like work three years on an hour of something, you know what yeah. I mean? So like a television show wasn't good for me. Um, I mean, I liked doing it, like the show I made for MTV was like super fun, um, but like, I liked, you know what I mean? I, I, I couldn't make eight hours of something right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just wanted, I wanted to spend two years making 90 minutes of something. So logistically, it just meant like I could really. Um, what whatever. are the things that you can do that specifically with? And you're like, oh, movies. Yeah, 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 well, kind of. But I'm just saying like uh, television is just too much, like yeah. too, too long. Um, and then like. Well, how about the nature of how people consume movies? Like you're not. Yeah, I mean, a theater, in a theater. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge part of it. It's like, I don't know. People are saying, you know, movies are being replaced by TV, and, and that might be, but like, I, I think the more we are plugged in, the more urgent it is that we have a cultural space that it is required to put your phone down. It's hilarious that the only place that we are required to put our phone down is a place where we look at a bigger screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still, it's like, it's very important to have, um, and also there's like a logistic thing of the size of a, uh, <laughs> the size, of the, I do think the size of your phone screen is actually what makes you feel the way you do about the things on it. Mm -hmm. You're just domineering over these stupid <laughs> fucking people yeah. on your phone. Truly, like, yeah. of course, all this bull, like, look at this little bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Look at my stupid friends. You'll, you'll scroll through your phone, and in no particular order, you will see your mother, the president, <laughs> Jiffy Lube. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> but all existing yeah, in a flat. same tiny, awful space, you know? Um, and on television, it's great, but it's also just like, yeah, it's embedded in your living room, you know? And um, a screen, to be smaller than a screen, to be, to be subjugated before an image is very, very powerful. And it's not life-size, right? The, the people will be bigger than you are. But, and, and like, I mean, just to have, that, ha, ha, having it happen there, and for it to be a 13-year-old girl, you know what I mean, a movie that would usually, oh, that should be a television thing or a streaming, yeah. whatever, it's like, no, like, she should be 30 feet tall, and her experience is bigger than you. Yeah. And you should be able to sit back and humble yourself before her, because her, the, her interior life is as big as anybody's, yeah. you know what I mean? Why can't an epic story about the human condition be about a girl walking into a pool party instead of you know, some fucking poet in a cabin in the woods, or like <laughs> some guy with a sword, or whatever? I don't, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that was important to me, you know? Um, it was the same with my stand-up show, like I always, the scale of things are very important to me, so. I mean, you know. It's also a chill, I mean, please go see this in the theater. <laughs> but, but also it's a chill movie to watch on your laptop because that also is its own lonely But don't, but don't watch it on your phone. Don't, <laughs> no, but even your phone, I'm just saying it's about a girl on her phone. <laughs> but, but please go to the movies and then watch it on your phone later. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so to, to sort of end a little bit on the Kanye bit, you know, you said you, you feel like you could go back to doing stand-up again, yes. uh, where afterwards you're like, I think, I don't feel like you could. So like you were saying, you don't think you would, we don't know. Uh, if you were to put a percentage of your likelihood of going back? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I, I, I've been performing a little bit here and Oh, there. what have you been doing? Like five minutes in LA, I mean, I'll do a little thing. Just um, like talk, you're not like, oh, I have this song, but I Oh, I do, I have a couple songs. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what they become, you know what I mean? Like, my, my big thing was like, oh, maybe like in my 30s I'll do like a musical, you know, a stage musical or something, because I would love to, I love making things for the theater. Like I'm saying like, and that's what I felt like I was doing, like, like lighting and, you know, and, and be, to be able to, to design a show um, that doesn't need to travel would be like so incredibly yeah. liberating, because I was so limited technically because, you know, I only had whatever. Yeah. It was a very cheap lighting setup for what we got out of it, and um, it but had if, to travel. If, yeah, I feel like with Oh Hello, there's now like a vocabulary for stand up to like, Broadway's a thing that... Yeah, so. but I wouldn't want to do it just because, like, for me, because, like, the other thing is, like, oh, I would love someone that can actually sing to do my songs. <laughs> like, truly, like, like, I have the most limited flat yeah. range ever, like, nasally flat. So, like, please, if I could write it for actual singers, that would be incredible. So, I mean, if it, if, let's say you don't do stand-up again, or you sort of do it here and there, or it takes 10 years, how do you feel that this is essentially... For most people, like the last they'll be seeing you perform for one. Whatever. I mean, whatever. I'm mean, saying like <laughs> that's fine. Truly, like okay. The answer to that, like, if I have to take that question on its own terms, is like happy. Yeah. Feel good about that. Great. I feel like it's a good one. The real answer is thinking about myself in those terms has led me to nowhere but unhappiness and anxiety. To think of myself in terms of my career and how I am seen 
is bottomless pit of nothing for me. It, it leads absolutely nowhere. Um, I don't care about my body of work. I don't care about having some oeuvre. I don't, I don't I really, I don't care about having a consistent body yeah. of work. The only thing that gives me enjoyment is the current pursuit of whatever I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, the sort of careerist floating over myself is this, there's, there's n I'm never gonna be happy with that. I don't think anyone would be yeah. happy with that. I don't think that leads to anything good. So like, whatever. Yeah. Truly. That's, that's a good thing. So I wanted to end uh, with this one question, which, uh, feels appropriate with the joke. How do you feel like this interview was affected by being in front of people? You know, um, every interview is in front of people or it's a conversation. Yeah. You know, the people are just, you know, two months down the line reading it or they're on a podcast. Everyone's there. Um, I mean, I'm doing little things. I'm pointing at them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm probably feeling... Good question. I know what you're doing. It's very funny. Um, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm feeling probably a little pressure to, uh, like, is this funny? Is this, but, but, but really, it's not, uh, I, feel, I feel freer of it. I don't really uh, worry about it too much. And um, I don't know. I would, I think it's a lot more similar to, Regular conversation, regular, I, I don't think there's a difference anymore. I really don't. I mean, what do you do? Like everyone, everything you do in yeah. your life, every picture you take, every, every stand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's all in front of people now. Yeah. Everything's in front of people. Everything has the potential to be in people. front of people. Yeah, it's 200 people here, right? Maybe 1,000 view it online. If I say something right now, Half a million people could see it. My career's over. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's yeah. really, really wild. And I hope we are, a and I don't just say this on my own behalf, because I think I'm pretty good at navigating what's correct to say. I hope we're a little more forgiving of everyone, especially young people. This is not, oh God, this is not to get into Kanye. Sure. But for, <laughs> this is not to He's get, not that young. It's not it's to like get to Kanye, but it's to get to young people. To I hope that people have an ability to think and fail out loud. Um, and to grow. I have embarrassing, offensive, bad material from when I was 16 and 17. Stuff I cannot stand behind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Truly, I have a song about like Helen Keller. It's not funny. It's actually yeah. mean. Yeah. It's like mean and not cool and cheap. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty ashamed of it. But am I that ashamed that I was 16 and thought that was funny? No, I can kind of forgive myself for it. Um, and to so, have it still online is to be like, I am, and to disavow it, I think, is a, a powerful way of conveying that. Message. I might have deleted that one. I actually think I did delete that one. Um, but yeah, I'll disavow any of that stuff. Yeah. But I guess that's the point, is that like, this would have scared me two years ago when I made this. Yeah. It doesn't anymore that much, because uh, ah, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's a, and, and, and the world's like over, it's like ending. <laughs> so I mean, who knows? <laughs> like truly, it's like, and I just don't think, I don't, I don't even know how to begin to talk about any of that stuff. That was, that was good. So the time What do you all feel? All right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so it's time for our, our final segment, which play the cue. <laughs> so uh, it's time for. Uh, it's time for uh, the laughing round. So it's like a lightning round because it's comedy. It's a laughing round. Right. So that's the, <laughs> that's lightning and laughing at the same. Got time. you. So it makes sense. Uh, is, you know, like lightning round rules apply that are going to be a little bit faster and less Great. faster jokes. Um, if you could be another comedian, like uh, being John Malkovich style, like be in their body while they're performing. Kevin Hart. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite joke joke, like a street joke? Um, it's long. All right. Uh, it's a long joke, is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. Um, a guy is having sex with his wife, <laughs> and she can't um, orgasm. This is bad. <laughs> Having sex with his wife, she can't orgasm, so he goes to the doctor. Mm -hmm. This guy's name's John. <laughs> the doctor says, uh, he goes, my wife can't orgasm. He says, do you have an AC? He goes, no. He goes, well, sometimes when women are cold and they get too hot, they can't orgasm. So if you don't have an AC, get a friend and have him waft a towel <laughs> over you while you have sex, and then she'll orgasm. So John calls his friend Steve. So that night he's fucking his wife, John is, and Steve is wafting a towel. Fucks her for about 20 minutes, she's not coming at all. So John goes, all right, Steve, we've got to switch. This is bullshit. Steve, Steve starts fucking his wife. He's wafting a towel. 
A minute later, she orgasms, and he says, see, Steve, that's how you waft a fucking towel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> should I end it on that one? So, uh, I have more questions. <laughs> He's such a, it's such a sad man, it's so funny. Uh, I wanted to play a sub game, which uh, it's like album association. I'm gonna name each of your albums. I'm gonna see the, the first lyric or thing that you remember from it. We're gonna go in order. Uh, the eponymous first album. Uh, I just remember my haircut, my bad haircut. <laughs> All right, that works. On the cover of the album. <laughs> uh, words, words, words. Um, I think about I think about the Art is Dead song, which I was 19. It's very sweet, you know. It's it's sweet. I was I was I was trying. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Uh, I think about San Francisco, the Regency, performing at that place. Beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful people. And the audience was below me, which is a very rare thing. Yeah. It, made, it, it was really, really beautiful. It made, made the special feel really nice. And then make happy, ideally not one of the things that we've just talked about for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> um, make happy, I think of, uh, I think of the group of people and my dog. <laughs> That's nice. Um, do you have a joke or that, or what is a joke from your career that you've always thought was so funny that you've tried and tried and it's never worked, but you will always think it's funny, but at this point you've given up trying to do in front of people and you'll do this one last time. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I, I mean, oh God, oh God. Um, or no, something that, that didn't go as well as you think it should, but you Yeah, haven't. yeah, plenty. Um, <laughs> uh, I would have like real big, <laughs> like the, the real thing is like my bits when I would try them out for the, for the first time, sometimes they'd be like three minute backing tracks and you get in and within five minutes you're like, oh, this is not going, I mean five seconds, yeah. you're like this is not going well and you have, you know, two minutes left of the thing to do. Um, you know, and like, it's funny to like make a joke about, you know, I had taxi cabs and now I'm working on it, you know what yeah. I mean? But when you're like trying to make a peanut butter sandwich and it's not going well, you look like a tool. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like, like you're like, I'm like really, committed most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do this thing where it was like, like I was on stage, maybe I'll end up doing this, I probably won't, but like I was on stage and then I hear a voice and then I go out and you hear two of my voices arguing that it's like my clone is off stage. <laughs> and then I come back with ripped clothes and you think that I actually killed the real one and now the clone's on. As you can see, it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> It didn't really work, so a lot of it was that. Another one is like taking a girl up from the audience, whatever, it's all. I wanted to, you know, a lot of things with plants and trying to yeah, do yeah. fake stuff and have her do, uh, whatever, it's not gonna work. Uh, one last thing, be before we do this last segment, I should note that there'll be a meet and greet with Bo uh, in the lounge, so uh, please. <laughs> Uh, so don't rush us after we're done. Well, don't rush Bo. I am not doing a being great so. <laughs> Um I thought, uh, I want to, if you're okay with this, I'm gonna scroll to a random page and when you say stop, you read that poem. Sure. And that'll be the end. You're okay. saying stop whenever. Stop. Oh. <laughs> From the puppy's perspective. And it's, you have to see that it's a, uh, a box with little holes in it. So, because it's the drawing, it's a present from Christmas with holes in it. <clears throat> I'm stuck in this thing and I'm wanting to leave. There are holes in the thing that hiss when I breathe. And the more that I sit here, the more I believe that I'm stuck in this thing and won't ever leave. Back at the kennel, the whole cage was ours. But maybe these walls are, act are better than bars, or maybe I'm hurtling skyward to Mars, and maybe those holes are actually stars. That's it. Bo Burnham, this is a good one. Thank you very much. Of all